Hello, today's discussion is on necrotizing pneumonia. Necrotizing pneumonia is a severe form of community acquired pneumonia, which is characterized by rapid progression of consultation to necrosis and decapitation, which might lead to pulmonary gangrene. It is a severe form of pneumonia. A small number of patients with bacterial lung infection do not follow the usual predictable course and they develop a necrotic process even with optimal medical treatment. Normally, we expect improvement after 48 to 72 hours of optimal medical treatment after we admit a child or a patient with community acquired pneumonia. But those with necrotizing pneumonia, they do not follow this usual predictable course. The process is usually rapidly progressive and this patient tends to present with acute respiratory distress. Necrotizing pneumonia has been characterized by the finding of pneumonic consolidation with multiple necrosis of the lung parenchyma. This necrotic focus might coils, resulting in a lung abscess if localized or pulmonary gangrene if involving an entire lobe. In necrotizing pneumonia, tissue necrosis occurs as a result of different reasons. It might be due to the direct bacterial invasion or it might be due to inflammatory response due to the toxins produced by the invasive pathogen or it might be due to the associated vasculites and the venous thrombosis. The most common pathogens associated with necrotizing pneumonia are stripped pneumonia. Stripped pneumonia is the most common cause of necrotizing pneumonia followed by staphorus and the Klebsiella pneumonia. Necrotizing pneumonia tends to occur in adult males with concomitant medicalness such as diabetes, alcohol abuse, and the corticosteroid therapy. In contrast, the pediatric patients are predominantly composed of healthy female children. Common present symptoms include typical signs and symptoms of pneumonia such as fever, cough, chest pain, and shortness of breath. These patients may have purulent sputum and sometimes present with confusion. Duration of symptoms prior to hospitalization is extremely variable, ranging from several days to weeks. Necrotizing pneumonia is associated with high inflammatory markers, high levels of WBC, high levels of ESR, and the C-reactive protein. The necrotic process can occur at any lobe of the lung, but involvement of right lower right middle and the left lower lobes is more frequent, especially right lower and right middle lobe. A paranemonic fusion or empyema is a common complication of necrotizing pneumonia. The patient's condition can be further complicated by the development of high output bronchopleural fistula, massive hemoptosis and the bilateral diffuse pneumonia. Septic shock and the respiratory failure might subsequently occur in some patients, leading to the necessary for vasopressor therapy and the ventilator support. But this is not the case in all patients. It occurs in some patients. Some might present with septic shock and respiratory failure, while the rest might present as a pneumonia but fail to improve as expected. When we came to diagnosis, the diagnosis of necrotizing pneumonia is made generally according to chest imaging, especially chest X-ray and the computer tomography CD scan, special contrast enhanced. Early in the disease course, necrotizing pneumonia typically appears as consolidation on the chest radiograph. Repeated radiographic evaluation every three to four days is advocated to determine the effect of antibiotic therapy and detect the occurrence of complications. However, it is common for chest radiograph to underestimate the degree of parenchymal distraction. So, contrast enhanced CT scan is the standard procedure for the diagnosis of necrotizing pneumonia and is helpful in evaluating the parenchymal complications. When we came to treatment, intravenous antibiotic therapy remains the mainstay of therapy of necrotizing pneumonia. The choice of initial antibiotics should be directed at broad coverage with commonly implicated pathogens. Those pathogens are, as I have said above, stripped, staphorus, and the Klebsiella. So, empiric penicillin, so safe triaxone, and glycopeptides, especially vancomycin, if safe triaxone, then susceptible stripped pneumonia was considered. 
Clindamycin or metrondazole can be used in combination to cover possible involvement of anaerobes, especially if there is lung abscess. When we see the place of surgical management in necrotizing pneumonia, empyema should be drained by chest tube and roof lung abscess and resect or debride necrotic tissue to control the dissemination or the progression of the infection. The surgical procedures can range from necrosectomy to decortication to pulmonary resection, wedge resection, lobectomy or pneumotomy depending on the clinical situation, assessment of CT scan and the intraoperative findings. This is all about necrotizing pneumonia. Thank you for watching.